everyone. Ashley Mayu and Mike Beer here with a stakes preview for the Grade Three Monrovia this Saturday out at Santa Anita Park. It's race nine, excuse me, on their card and kicks off that late pick four, six and a half furlongs on the downhill turf course. And we already have a scratch in this field, Mike, of the two. But looking at this group, I think it's a pretty nice event, even with a field of seven. There's some talented uh, fillies and mares in here. I agree. I think it's kind of wide open. And I, if nothing else, I didn't think it was the kind of race where you had to, you know, settle for one of the shorter prices in here. I think a lot of different horses can win. Trips are going to be really important. Um, and it, it just, it kind of feels like there's not that much pace in here. So that's one thing I think you have to take into consideration before you really dive into it. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And we'll take a look at the time form pace projections and it's going to favor those front runners. Graceland Gray does draw to the inside also see the eight get the money should be forward as well as the morning line favorite the six ag bullet who comes off a pretty nice uh, victory off the long layoff yeah exactly this, this is kind of how it feels like this pace is going to shake out here it'll just be interesting to see what uh, they do with graceland gray this time because they took a hold of her last time and jammed her in the pocket um, and it really worked against her and allowed ag bullet to get the jump on her we're actually going to take a look at that performance to kick it off from Graceland Gray, that second place finish in the Wishing Well. Now, uh, Juan Hernandez is going to climb back aboard her this Saturday. Different rider in this situation. As you mentioned, the tactics may be not ideal, but we're pointing out a couple of horses here. Graceland Gray, you can't miss her. She is the Gray. Miss Lizzie, the third place finisher, and Ag Bullet ends up winning here. It just did not work out for her at all. But with that all said, she still runs on here after kind of having to switch her course and is going to get up for second. Yeah, I mean, you saw her there sort of just get jammed in there. They tried to come up the inside. It didn't open up for her, and it, it feels like it really cost her. I'm not going to sit here and suggest that she was definitely going to win, uh, but she was going to be a lot closer there. Um, and again, it's just going to be – it'll be interesting to see what they do because in their, the last two starts since they cut her back, and she ran well in both of those races, but they were intent on taking a hold of her from the start and not letting her go to the lead. I mean, if they do that again this time, that could be a pretty big mistake. And you kind of look at her, you know, they had her at that mile distance for so long. She tried the six and a half on the downhill in the past, but recently she's been better. Just hasn't found the winner's circle just yet. We mentioned she draws the inside. She has a bit of early foot. Now we said the two is scratch, which moves us to the three Comanche country here for Little Red Feather Racing, Phil D'Amato. Uh, this is not only a cutback in distance. This is the first start off extended layoff and a big drop in class. Yeah, it's concerning that it, not only is it a really long layoff, but it's a long layoff after it just it feels like she didn't come back well at all as a three year old last year. She was really good as a two year old, I thought anyway. I mean, I really liked what she did when they got her over here. Um, I don't know. She came back last year. It felt like she didn't progress at all. They stopped on her in the summer and now they're going to come back sprinting here. So there are a lot of questions surrounding her this horse. Pretty clear, though, that if she can still run and she comes back here and, and everything's all right with her. I think there's a chance she could be pretty tough in this race. Yeah, definitely. She has shown those glimpses of talent. She's eight to one on the morning line. Up next, though, is the number four, Chimoza, who we will show her most recent start on the turf. And it was six and a half. It was on the downhill. Stay and Scam ends up winning this event. And actually, on Thursday, finished second in an event. A very nice performance. And you look at this, you know, this is a good performance from her. I know she doesn't find the winner's circle often, but she does a lot right. Yeah, that's true. And she, she boy, it, it feels like she really had a chance at this one. And she just couldn't quite get the job done here. I, I still thought it was a, a, a good performance against a good field. Um, all of her turf starts are pretty good, Ashley. Trips are really important. That's the one thing that concerns about her. Trips are really important. She doesn't always get good ones. But um, I think if she falls into the right spot here, she's a major player in this race. I'll be interested to see what kind of price she is. Now, the five, Miss Lizzie, she's a closer through and through. We've seen that just about every time. She'll need some pace help, but she's been flying late. She was on the winning side of that back on February 3rd, although it was against lesser competition to pick up that fourth win. But we saw her in the wishing well. She was making up ground, but she's still pretty far behind the top two. Yeah, the pace projector that we looked at earlier really works against Miss Lizzie again. Um, I think it's important to note, though, that wishing well, it's not like they were flying up front in that race. That, that race was dominated up close, and Miss Lizzie had a ton of ground to make up. She made up a lot of it, almost got second from Graceland Gray in there. And we already talked about Graceland Gray having a little trouble, but this horse really ran in that race. I, I wish there was more pace in here to set her up because I think she's a little bit interesting at a fair price. We talk about the lack of pace. The number six ag bullet should be fairly close to it, undefeated on the turf in those three tries. And she was really ready to roll off of that layoff. It wasn't a short layoff by any means. I mean, do you have any concerns with a horse like this, Mike, now second start off the layoff after such a big effort taking a step backwards? 
Yeah, no, I mean, I don't look at races that way. I, I don't, I don't believe that horses bounce, um, and so I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. Especially the wishing well, just because I, I feel like she didn't have to work that hard in that race. It was a pretty soft trip for her. The pace wasn't that fast. She was clear on the outside, and whatever she got the job done. I won't knock what she's done so far. Um, I will just say she's a really short price in here. She had all the best of it in the wishing well when she won her other turf sprint um, last January a super soft trip on a really slow pace. So I, she could be a little dressed up here at a really short price. The seven lucky girl up next, the Irish bred mare who's exiting back to back grade two events. I think in the gold of the Buena Vista more recently. And she's one that the return of the races, it wasn't great, but she did face some really nice horses. I talked about staying and scan being a runner up yesterday. And the debt was very, very good on Thursday at Santa Anita with that late surge. And, you know, she was third in that event. So I think for her, this is class relief and something new, trying a new distance. Yeah, I, I agree that it's class relief here. I'll be interested to see if she can handle the cutback. I have um, a little interest in her going the shorter distance, if only because, and you have to go back to earlier in her career, but even in some of those mile races, she would make really early runs in those races. And I, I think she ran some really good ones from, from off the pace. I like that she gets on the move early in her races. It suggested to me that cutting back in distance might really work for her. I do think she's talented enough to beat a field like this one. Um, and it, it also feels like she's going to be a great price in this race. I think there's a lot to like about this horse if she stays around that morning line. Came into the morning line, eight to one on Lucky Girl. And the last horse in the field is the eight, get the money. We'll take a look at her only turf try, which was her most recent outing. That's how she kicked off her four-year-old campaign against that first level allowance competition. I thought she got a really nice trip in here. She was close enough to the pace early on, and she's just going to get up just in time after having to sort of uh, navigate this trip in the stretch. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I feel like there there is a way to look at this and go, ah, you know, she got blocked behind horses and she still wins. I think ultimately it really worked out for her in here. She, she never really got stopped. She held her position. And then when she got room on the inside, she got up. Thought she ran well in there. I do think she's going to have to run better than that against this field. But I certainly don't think she's in over her head. Um, I wouldn't take the 6-1 to one morning line on her, but maybe she'll drift. And you see Frankie DeTori booked to ride a new rider for her in her sixth career start. So that's the field of eight for the grade three Monrovia top pick time. Curious to see what direction you went in. You're going to go with the seven lucky girl who we talked about a little bit of a price on the morning line. Yeah, I just wanted to try somebody else in here. Uh, you know, one of the horses, you know, maybe who's not exiting that wishing well that we that we talked about. I think you and I both kind of agree that we don't want Ag Bullet in this race. I would rather have your horse, Graceland Gray, but I got her second. And I'm going to try to get Lucky Girl to work out a trip here and get herself involved in the stretch. I think the big thing is Juan Hernandez has won aboard Graceland Gray a couple of starts back, has been a boarder since then. I like that he's getting back aboard and hopefully they'll be able to get her in a position where she's comfortable and not force her to raid and not have her, you know, get into traffic like she did last right. time out. I don't think that helped her at all. So lucky girl for Mike, the one Graceland Gray for me. Best of luck in this weekend's Monrovia.